The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you one of the 47 million Americans who benefit from group insurance? Listen carefully to this special message from Mr. Francis B. Davis, Jr., chairman of the board of directors of the United States Rubber Company. Mr. Davis says, and we quote, we deeply regret losing an employee, but we are glad to be able to help in easing the financial burden on his family through group life insurance. What will happen to my family if? That's a worry that troubles every husband and father. Our company's answer to that universal if is group insurance and peace of mind. Yes, group insurance is something worth owning. In 14 minutes, the Equitable Life Assurance Society will give further important information about group insurance which will interest both employers and employees. Tonight's FBI file, The Big Shakedown. When the last United States census was taken, there were 300,000 people in this country who gave their address as prison. What made those people criminals? How had they become different than the ordinary law-abiding citizen who does his job and goes his way? The answers to those questions are not simple. But it can be said that the criminal does have two characteristics that outweigh all others. The first is greed. The overwhelming desire to get something for nothing. The second is ego. The ability of the criminal to believe that he is smart enough to get away with any crime, be that crime robbery, larceny, forgery, auto theft, or even murder. Tonight's file opens in the library of one of our state prisons. The custodian of this book-filled room, an inmate named Lawton, is seated behind a desk. A second prisoner enters. How are you today, Mr. Lawton? Oh, hello, Chick. Here's that last book I borrowed. I, I finished it. Well, good for you. You know something? That's the most pages I ever read in my life. You should feel justly proud. Thanks. Hey, uh, what's this I hear about you? What do you mean? You're getting out of here. Oh, yes, I'm leaving day after tomorrow. Gee, I'm sorry to hear that. You're what? Oh, I <laughs> I didn't mean about your getting out. That, that part's swell, but we'll miss you around here, that's all. I appreciate that, Jake. You know, you're the only guy in this whole joint with real class. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Lawton, tell me something, will you? Yes. This touch you got sent away for... Extortion, wasn't it? That's right. What's the game on that? Why do you ask? Well, I guess maybe books have changed me. You see, I kind of got ambitious to be more than just a guy heisting delicatessen. That's most commendable. To tell you the truth, Mr. Lawton, I... I want to be a guy like you. <laughs> That's very flattering, Chief. Uh, I mean it. Y you see, I, I get out of here in a month myself. Maybe there's some way we could get together then, huh? Well, I... I I'd work for you for nothing at first, just to learn the business. Not so loud, Chick. Not so loud. Oh. Well, what do you say, Mr. Lawton? You mean, will I take you on? Yeah. When you're released, Chick, get in touch with me. Just a minute. 
Yes? Hello. Well? Does uh, Mr. Lawton live here? Who are you? My name is Chick Pelly. Uh, who are you? I'm Mrs. Lawton. What did you want with him? Well, him and I were up... That is, we were both in... Look, just let me see the guy, will you? He, he asked me to come here. Okay. Wait a minute. George. Well? There's a character at the front door with a very loose lower lip. He says you ask him to come here. What's his name? Pelly. Chick Pelly. Oh, of course. Chick and I were away together. Nice company you kept. Grace, darling, the state prison is hardly a gentleman's club. What's this business about you asking him to come here? Well, Mr. Pelly is a very ambitious young man. He wants to get into the higher criminal brackets. In fact, he wishes to serve as my apprentice. Your apprentice? That's right. Look, what's got into you? What? Ever since you got out of prison, you've sat around here doing absolutely... Darling, for your edification, I've been in action since the day I got home. What? But inasmuch as I work with my brain and not with my hands, I can't show you any material results. Look, all Let I know is... Let me finish, please. I have a setup that's been ready for a week. The reason I haven't moved with it is because I've been waiting for Mr. Chick Pelly. Oh, no. So send him in, Grace. Look. I said send him in. Okay. Mr. Pelly. Yeah? Mr. Lawton will see you now. Thanks. Right in there. Okay. How are you, Mr. Lawton? Hello there, Chick. Well, I headed right here for your place as soon as I got out. I'm glad you did, Chick. I've been waiting for you. Huh? I've decided to take you on as a pupil. Hey, that's swell. You will start at once. Yeah, but I... I don't know much about extortion. Well, its basic principle is the gathering of little-known facts about people. Facts they would rather not have revealed. Uh-huh. The standard practice is to send a letter to the person you have something on and request payoff for not divulging the information. And then backing your request by sterner action... If necessary. Uh-huh, yeah. I have such prospect in mind. His name is William Graham. And as your first lesson, Chick, you're writing him a letter. William. William. Uh, uh yes, dear? Aren't you coming up to bed? Well, I... No, not just yet, dear. You go on ahead. William, what's the matter? Well, not a thing. I don't believe you. You didn't eat a bite of dinner, and you sat around all night just staring into space. What's wrong? Well, I guess there's no point in keeping it from you. I received a letter today. Yes? It was sent anonymously. It had no signature. What was it about? Something that my father did years ago something I thought no one knew about I see the letter writer knew of course that I'm running for office in this election he's asking ten thousand dollars to keep the matter quiet good heavens Martha I I don't know what to do there's only one thing to do that's blackmail extortion you should turn the letter over to the police I don't see how I can why not if this matter were made public it would have a great effect on my election I know it would but is the election that important that's what I'm trying to decide. Oh, William, you can't. Please, you... dear, you run on to bed. This is a decision I must make by myself. George. Yes, Gray? Your pupil is here again. Oh, fine. Send him in, will you? Okay. Go ahead in, genius. Thanks. Hiya, Mr. Lawton. Hello, Chick. Well, did you see this afternoon's paper? Yes. The guy took the ad in the personal column just like I told him to do in the letter. I know, I saw it. Well, that means he wants to do business, huh? I would think so, yes. What's my next move, Mr. Lawton? You send him a second note. Tell him to put the 10000 in a package. Okay. All bills of small denomination. Right. Then have him get in his car with the package and drive out to Oakland Cemetery. Tell him to park right in front of the soldier's memorial. Uh-huh. And then what? Then you say he's to get out of the car, yes. leave the package, walk out to the main gate, and unless he does, the details of his father will be given to his opponent. 
and we'll deal with him in a manner not conducive to his good health. And then if he follows instructions, I grab the package out of the car and blow, eh? Exactly. Gee, Mr. Lawton, every guy should have a teacher like you. Sit down, Mr. Graham. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Oh, what can I do for you? Did the chief of police call you? Yes, I've been expecting you. He told me that your story would be of interest to us here at the FBI. You know about the extortion note? Yes. Or may I see it, please? Of course. Here. Thank you. My husband doesn't know I'm coming here. In fact, he doesn't know I have the letter. I understand. The night he received it, I asked him to turn it over immediately to the police. But, well, the election is so important to him and all. He wanted time to think it over. This was a week ago? Yes. This morning he received a second letter. I know this because I recognize the handwriting. Yes. Well, go on. As soon as he read it, he left the house. I have a feeling, Mr. Taylor, that he was on his way to pay the money. Where is this second note? My husband took it with him. Well, that undoubtedly told him where to leave the money. Have you tried to locate your husband today? Yes. I couldn't find Did him. Did you check to see if he'd gone to the bank? No. Well, we'll get on that at once. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Yes? I, I know I've betrayed my husband's trust in coming here. Not at all, Mrs. Graham. You've done him a great service. I just hope you're not too late. Grace? Yeah? What time is it? Um, almost 4.30. Chick should be getting here by now. If he's coming back at all. What do you mean? Well, $10,000 is a lot of money. <laughs> Don't worry, my dear. I trust the boy completely. There, you see? That must be him now. Uh, let him in, please, Grace. Look, all I do around Answer here anyway... Answer the door. Okay. Hiya, Mrs. Lawton. Hello. Look, I got the dough. Well, come in. Thanks. Well, everything went Okay. Good for you, Chick. Here's the package. Splendid. You see, I already tore the paper and looked inside. There's real dough in there, all right. Grace, open it up and count it, please. Okay. Well, what do you think of your pupil now, Mr. Lawton? From my standpoint, Chick, you've done a most excellent job. Thanks. You wrote the two letters. You mailed them. You also collected the money. That's right. However, from your standpoint, I'd say it didn't turn out so well. What do you mean? Well, you were a little careless when you wrote those letters. The chances are you left a few fingerprints. But you didn't tell me to look out for that. I know. There's also a very strong likelihood that you were seen when you took the money from the car. Hey, wh what is this? I'm just pointing out the mistakes you made. If the authorities are called in on this, they'll undoubtedly pick you up. Mrs. Lawton, what, what is he saying? What I hoped he'd say right from the beginning. Huh? That you were stupid enough to let him use you. Now, wait a minute. You I wanted to learn, Chick. But I didn't want to be framed. I neglected to tell you that was part of the lesson. Oh, you dirty... Stay where you are. Put down that gun. Sorry, Chick. Mr. Lord! Grace? I'd say he's earned his diploma. <laughs> Turn in just a moment to tonight's file, which shows how your FBI promotes national security. Now let's hear from a typical American who has attained greater personal security thanks to his employer's cooperation and the equitable society. You know, Mr. Cross, I sure get the breaks. The company I work for has given us all complete group insurance protection. Yes, you really are lucky. Complete group insurance includes life insurance, accident and sickness insurance, and a retirement income, plus hospital, medical, and surgical benefits for yourself and your wife and children, all in one package 
from the Equitable Life Assurance Society without any medical examination. That's hard to believe. And you know, it hardly cost me anything. That's right. Your employer helps to foot the bill so you and your fellow employees can get this complete protection at what amounts to a wholesale price. Last summer, one of our men was on his vacation and he got killed in an auto accident. Well, our Equitable Society plan covers 24 hours a day wherever you are. And since it was an accident, our group plan pays him double. This fellow's widow is going to keep on getting his paycheck every month for more than two years. You know, group insurance was originated by the Equitable Life Assurance Society in 1911. Thomas I. Parkinson, president of the Equitable Society, says group insurance is the most inspiring life insurance development of our time. If your company does not have group insurance, or if your company's group program is incomplete, your management can get in touch with the nearest Equitable Life Assurance Society office. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, The Big Shakedown. It is safe to say that every prisoner in jail in the United States would rather be a free man than remain behind bars. And yet, there are 25,000 people arrested every month in this country who have already been convicted of a previous crime. Those are the criminals who will submit to any indignity except going to work. Those are the criminals who think they have learned enough about crime to succeed, for they have a plan. But as tonight's case from the files of your FBI proves, society also has a plan. A plan called law and order that invariably defeats them. <laughs> Tonight's file continues at the home of the extortion victim, William Graham. FBI agent Jim Taylor has been brought there by Graham's wife. Mr. Graham. Yes? I don't think you should blame your wife for what she's done. Frankly, my only regret is that she didn't come to us sooner. Now, you say you've paid the money. Yes. Oh, William. Well, I, I was frantic, Martha. I didn't see any other way out. You're still not out, Mr. Graham. Oh, what do you mean? my guess that you've only bought yourself temporary relief. Don't forget the extortionist still has that information about your father. If he follows a pattern, as all of them do, this money was only a down payment. But he gave his word in the letter. Mr. Graham, criminal's word is hardly a guarantee. Uh, William, this man you gave the money to, did you see him? No. Well, we have a line on him anyway. What? How? When Mrs. Graham first brought the letter you received in my office, I had it sent to the laboratory to be examined. Yes. There are a number of fingerprints on it, and one set checked with some prints in our criminal files. They belong to a man named Pelly, Chick Pelly. He was released from state's prison just a few weeks ago. I see. We put out a general alarm on him this morning. Oh, that's wonderful. So you see, Mr. Graham, in spite of everything, you still might get your money back. I'll get it. Hello? Yes. Yes, he is. Just a moment, please. It's for you, Mr. Taylor. Oh. Oh, thank you. Here you are. Thanks. Hello. Oh, yes, Bob. Yes. Yes, I see. No. No, I'll meet you back at the office, Bob. Yeah. Bye. Well, I'm afraid I was too optimistic. What do you mean? The police found the body of Chick Pelly an hour ago in a vacant lot. George, are you going to sleep all day? I'm awake, dear. I'm just resting. What time did you get in? It's after three. Get rid of the body? Yes. I deposited him gently in a vacant lot. Well, we'd better start making plans then, hadn't we? 
For what? For getting out of here. Darling, there's no heat on us. Well, look, I want to go someplace where there is heat. The kind the sun makes. I want to go to Florida. Uh, not just yet, Grace. But you said... I know that we'd make a score and take a vacation, but I've changed my mind. But why? Well, I'm a greedy fellow. I can't resist one more little bite, especially when it looks so easy. What do you mean? Our victim, Mr. Graham. He paid so easily, I think he's good for another contribution. Now, look, George. I have a foolproof way of collecting from him, darling. After he kicks in the second time, we'll do Florida for the entire season. Come right into the living room, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Mrs. Graham. Uh, William. Yes, dear. Mr. Taylor's here. Oh, good. I came right over as soon as I got your call. I've received another letter. Well, unfortunately, I thought you would. It came in this morning's mail. May I see it, please? Yes, uh, here you are. They Thank want you. another $10,000. Yes, I see. Well, they've used a different technique. Cut the words from a newspaper and pasted them on the stationery. But the demand is the same. Well, mm. What about this man, Pelly, that was murdered? Well, the police have no leads on the killer as yet. But I'm convinced that he was just a stooge in this setup anyway. Why? Well, I went over his record. He wasn't smart enough to practice extortion. There was someone behind him. The same someone who sent this letter? I would presume so, yes. What shall I do? Follow the instructions. Take an ad in the paper as they request. Then we'll wait for another letter. Mr. Taylor, yes. I hope you don't mind my barging oh. into your office like this. Not at all, Mr. Graham. Any news? Yes, the letter just came. Here it is. Oh, thanks. They've figured out a very clever way for me to pass on the money. Huh? I'm instructed to go out Highway 17 until I come to the bridge that crosses Little Bend River. Yes, yes, I see that. They s then they say I should put the money in a waterproof container, mm -hmm. lash it around a log, and send the log downstream. This is clever. As I recall it, there's a ten-mile stretch downstream of complete wilderness. Or they could pick that log up any place along the way. I know. What's our next move? Well, I see you're instructed to do this at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yes. Well, do as they say, uh, what... except don't use money. We'll take over from there. Car 6, come in. Car 6, come in. This is Car 6. Hello, Jim. Nothing to report. I can see you up there. What's your altitude? About 1,500 feet. Hey, can you still see the log? Yes, I have my glasses on it. It's about three miles below the bridge. I can't see you, though. I'm driving south on Route 17. Any sign of life along the riverbank? No, I can't spot any. I'll contact the other cars now. I'll be back with you later. Right. Now let's get this thing out in the water. How'd you know there'd be a boat here? Because I put it here yesterday. Yeah. I rented it from a boathouse. There. Now, where are the oars? Uh, right here. Oh, fine. I hope the log hasn't gone by. It hasn't. What makes you so sure? Darling, when I plan something, I plan it well. Remember? I learned that this stream travels at the rate of three miles an hour. If he drops the log at exactly seven o'clock, it won't appear here for another ten minutes. Okay, okay. Now just get in the boat and we'll wait. <laughs> Car six, come in. This is car six. I may have something, Jim. What is it? Two people in a rowboat. A man and a woman have just put out from shore, a few hundred feet below the log. Where are you? On Route 17, exactly, exactly three miles south of Centerville. There's a dirt road a mile ahead of you on the left. It cuts right through to the river. It comes out just about where they are. Right. The people in the boat are picking up the log. Better step on it, Jim. Well, 
Is the money there? Still trying to open this thing. Can I help? Uh, no, I, I, I've got it. Why the... What's the matter? Paper. There's nothing here but bundles of paper. What? We're heading for shore, quick. What for? If he were smart enough to put paper in there, then he was smart enough to tip off the police. We're getting back to the car fast. Yeah, I thought this one was cool. Oh, no, shut up. They're coming into the bank. I know, I know. Well, hey, aren't you going to wait for me? Well, hurry. Give me a hand, will you? Just jump out. Thanks. Now, come on. Where to? We're heading for the car. Oh, no, you're not. What? Who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. George. What are you doing here? I wanted to make sure you were collecting that package. There wasn't even any dough in it. I know. Where you're going, you won't need it. George Lawton was turned over to the local authorities and received a sentence of first-degree murder. For her complicity in the murder, Grace Lawton is now serving a long term in the state penitentiary. Tonight's case history from the files of your FBI proves again a point which criminals have always refused to observe. There is no such thing as the perfect crime. There is no crime so well planned that not a single telltale clue is left. There is no refuge so distant that the eyes of the law cannot reach. There's an increase in the number of crimes being committed today, but there is a similar increase in the number of arrests being made. No law enforcement agency can prevent crimes from being committed, but of this you may be certain. When crimes are committed, the criminals will be arrested so long as there is a police officer on your corner, so long as there is your FBI. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now, one last word to business executives. Since group insurance was originated by the Equitable Life Assurance Society 35 years ago, thousands of employers have learned that group insurance means satisfied workers, builds loyalty and morale, decreases labor turnover, improves quality and quantity of production. Get all the facts and figures from an Equitable Society group insurance expert. Whether your employees are entirely uninsured or have only partial protection, get in touch with the nearest office or write direct to the New York home office of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Honest Embezzler. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is written and produced by Jerry Devine. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Honest Embezzler on this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.